young man, come here this instant. Yes, ma'am? Look at this glass. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's one of our very best glasses, ma'am. Filthy. It's bad enough that my doctor makes me drink milk. But to have to drink from a filthy glass. Mother, please. I knew we never should have come to Tahiti. What time is it? It's almost 9.30, Mrs. Webster. I really think you should go back to the hotel and rest. Young yeah. man. I thought you said Captain Troy docked an hour ago. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, then why isn't he here? Oh, I checked with his first mate, ma'am. Uh, Adam went into town to see him out of cargo. Into town? We've been waiting to see him for a week, and he goes into town. Susan, I think we should go back to the hotel. Oh, I'm sure he'll be back any minute, ma'am. Mother, I would like to wait for Captain Troy. All right, dear. Young man, weren't you getting me a fresh glass of milk? What's the matter, pal? What's the trouble? Business too good for you? No, Pappy, am I glad to see you get this battle axe off my neck, will you? Her name's Webster, Alice Webster. Reminds me of a school teacher I used to have. She's been waiting to see you. Claims you used to know her son in Korea. Johnny Webster, yeah. Yeah, here. No thanks. Young man, will you please stop dawdling and bring me my milk? Coming up, ma'am. She's all yours. Well, come on, Pappy. Stop dawdling. Gardner McKay in James A. Michener's Adventures in Paradise with Guy Stockwell as Chris Parker and James Holden as Clay Baker. Guest stars, Cecil Kellaway, Ann Helm, Mark Roberts, and starring Gardner McKay as Adam Troy. Johnny used to mention his Uncle Morgan. Well, this letter, it, it was written to Johnny by Uncle Morgan. Mailed in Australia. And he asked Johnny not to tell anyone where he is, but... Well, he does say that he, that he was coming to Tahiti to look you up. Well, he never came. Uh, at least I never saw him. Well, look, look, look. The letter's dated over three years ago. Well, he didn't find it until a month ago. Right after Johnny's death. And, and we came right out here. At my daughter's insistence. Oh, now, Mother, you you know you're just as anxious to find Uncle Morgan as I am. Well, he is my only brother, Captain. Hmm. Well, how long has it been since you've heard from him? Twelve years. He always said the family name and fortune and burdened him. And this is the only clue we've ever had as to where he might be. Wish I could help you. <laughs> he never came to see me. That much I can tell you. I see. Well... Thank you, Captain. I told her this trip would be a waste of time. I'm terribly sorry. No need for that. I had the foresight to bring my business manager with me, so I haven't been completely out of touch with my affairs. Shall we go? I am feeling quite tired. Oh, um, Mother, I'd like to stay a while. If you wish. Walk me to the door, Captain. Of course. I'd appreciate it, Captain, if you'd not raise the question of going to the police with my daughter. I'd prefer not to involve the authorities in this matter. What are you waiting for, Kate? Take my arm. Good night, Captain. You are a fine-looking young man. Perhaps he can make her forget about Ralph. I, I 
just feel that my uncle is somewhere in these islands. If you can make inquiries I'll or... I'll try. I'll try. I'm expecting a cargo very soon, but while I'm in Tahiti, I'll ask you now. You know, I always thought your uncle's name was Morgan. Well, he is. Morgan Richards. That's funny. Your mother mentioned uh, somebody called Ralph. Oh, Ra Ralph Harris. As my mother's business manager part of the time. And my fiancé the rest. to talk to you. Just once more, I knew you wouldn't see me if... We did all our talking this morning. If you don't mind, I'm quite tired. Mrs. Webster, please. Harris, you're a common thief. You've stolen thousands from me. If I'd made that discovery before we left the States, you wouldn't be here. You'd be in a cell. For Susan's sake. Susan's sake, but I haven't contacted the authorities. But I warn you, if you don't get on a plane and go back to the States and stay away from Susan... You wouldn't bring the police into this? The Webster name is too important to you. Don't try me too hard, Harris. I want you. You're a tyrannical, sick old woman, running everybody's life. Mine, Susan. Get out of here! And your brother, Mrs. Webster. Is that why he disappeared? I don't want to hear a word about Morgan from you. Not a... Mrs. Webster. Yes. Oh. Dress them. A pills. Harris. Sorry, Mrs. Webster. Terribly sorry. There are no pills. If we hadn't come to Tahiti, she'd still be alive. Doctor warned her against too much strain. I feel almost responsible. No, you shouldn't. Your mother was just as anxious to find your uncle as you were. You were very close to him, weren't you? I was only eight when he dropped out of sight. I've never forgotten him. Mother used to talk about him constantly. It was like he was living around the corner. I can understand that. No, I don't think you can, really. Mother always had such a... a sense of family. And now there, there isn't any family left. Johnny's dead. Mother. Darling, we're not going to be able to leave for about five days. It'll take that long before we can fly out of here with the... I mean, uh, well, these things are quite complicated. Darling. Um, if we have five days, I want to use them. You still hope you'll find your uncle? I want to try. Now that Mother's dead, I... I don't know. Now it... Somehow it seems more important to me than ever. Mr. Troy... Isn't there anything you can do? Well, sure, sure. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask around. I'll, I'll do uh, everything I can. I promise. went to that passport office. You know, Clay, I'm beginning to think nobody exists by the name of Morgan Richards. What about Inspector Bouchard? Couldn't he help? Susan's mother wanted the police left out. Uh, so maybe you shouldn't get involved, huh? Mm, that's easier to say. She hadn't seen the girl yet. You know, she feels as though she, she has no one. This uncle of hers is all she can think about. Good day, gentlemen. Should not the so grey-headed cries, uh, uh, unless the shot be double-sized. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> the floor's badly made. The buckles under my feet. Yeah, well, uh, what can I do for you? For me? And somebody was looking for Morgan Richards. You're Morgan Richards? <laughs> Scarcely. <laughs> Although there are a lot of other names by which I'm known. <laughs> Some of them classical. <laughs> For the time being, I prefer Hector. Uh, may I order now? Adam, we've got a cargo to pick up. 
Robert Sewer, Coker. They want us to leave this afternoon. Yeah, let's do it. Good. Click. Uh, well, haven't we met? Haven't I seen you around here before? Possibly. I'm a voyager in the grand tradition. A moocher in the grand tradition, you Thank mean. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, about this Morgan Richard. Do you know where he is? You have, uh, 200 francs, uh, maybe? Uh, well, 100 might be enough. All right, now, where is he? Gone to meet his ancestors. Dead. Dead as a doornail, in fact. And a loss to no one. What do you mean? I mean that Morgan and I had some wonderful and terrifying experiences together. But he was without doubt the most villainous man I've ever known. He was what? He was a brawler, a braggart, a minor pirate, a, and a better liar than I am. And that's a far call. How did he die? Uselessly. On an obscure island. As I remember it, he, he stole a few boats of cloth from a Chinese trader. The trader, uh, understandably, was rather annoyed about it. A, a fight erupted, and uh, the, the trader was badly mauled, and poor old Morgan was gone from us forever. To his memory. Well, his niece remembers him quite differently. Oh, naturally. Legend is always stronger than fact. Maybe Mrs. Webster knew some of this, and that's why she wanted the police killed. Well, what's to keep the daughter from going to the police now? Yeah, she probably will, especially if I turn up with nothing. With her mother dying suddenly like that, now if she finds out what her uncle really was... Yeah. We should all have legends to sustain us, should we not, Captain? <laughs> we should, yes. <laughs> Yes, we should. Hey, those letters. Uh... Here are the letters. Here are them. Webster, didn't you? What? She had a real heart attack, all right, but she didn't take her pills. She couldn't, because of you. Oh, you have no right to say a thing like that. Harris, I saw you through the window. She wanted to dictate some letters. I was on my way to her room. You were less than helpful to her, I'd say. It's nonsense, absolute nonsense. What reason had I... I was a confidential secretary. Confidential. And she confided in me greatly, including her worries over you and Susan, including the thousands you put into your own pocket. <clears throat> That's better. Now, let's not play games anymore, ever. We have a valuable property on our hands. We have to figure out how to handle it. We? You have plans to marry the property, isn't that true? Well, you go right ahead and set the date. So far as our financial arrangements are concerned, I think we can come to agreeable terms. Agreeable terms? That's what you promised, agreeable terms. Take it easy, Hector. You shanghaied me, all of you. That cold shower was a terrible shock. It shook me to the bones. <laughs> Where's the bottle of rum you promised me? One drink, Hector. One drink after you sign on. But that's blackmail and bribery. And when do I get my thousand francs? When you shake on the deal. I'm shaking. <laughs> I've got it right here. There you are. You get the other half after we sail for Sura. After? <laughs> I thought you were swindled again. Well, sit still, Hector. You won't be around and enjoy the other half. Yeah, two hours is all you'll have to play the part, Hector. Then you'll be safely out to sea with us. <laughs> <laughs> miles and miles of water. <laughs> Adam, I don't see how you expect to be able to pull this off. Oh, maybe I can't, but there's a chance. It might keep Susan from making any further inquiries about her uncle. Oh, let's start rehearsing. 
Between what you know about Morgan Richards and what Johnny told me, we ought to be able to create a pretty good relative. <laughs> Susan, I wanted to see if you were all right. I'm fine. Are you sure? Well, well, I miss her so much. Of course you do, darling. But I'm here. You know how much you mean to me, how much I love you? I want to marry you, Susan. I want to marry you as soon as possible. I don't know what I'd do without you. I, f I feel so alone. You won't be. I'll always be with you. Always. I miss my hair. I miss my beard. I don't feel like me at all. You're not. The you that was would have disgusted the lady. I had more character the other way. Not bad, not bad, not bad. All right, Morgan, which side is port side? Uh, the side closest to port. He's going to fool her even for two hours? Where have you been lately, Richards? Uh, lately? Oh, uh, boy, well, I've worked the ships. Where? Uh, in the galley. Oh, I worked in many a galley. And many is the time when the glass has been low, I had to strap my pots to the stove and take chances. Well, that is the crew way to take the chances. And then there was the time when an oiler named uh, Killer Kane came at me with a belaying pin, and I had to run him through with a um, marlin spike. How's that? Remarkable. Well, she may not believe your uncle. He's got to believe you're a liar, which he was, according to Johnny. Now, let's go. Come on. Well, I could have done very much better if I'd had a small bottle of... You're dry. <laughs> you're telling me. But Morgan Richards drinks like a man. Like a smart man. Chris, round up Kelly and tell him we're sailing in two hours. Yeah. Okay, let's go. You found him. You really found him. I know this sounds like a wild coincidence, but this morning I was signing on a new crewman. Older man, experienced cooking all around sailors. He confided in me that his name was really Morgan Richards. And they'd been kicking around these islands for ten years. What makes you believe this man, Kev? Well, the least I thought I could do was bring him up here. Well, Susan is probably someone who's heard you're oh, rich. Oh, Ralph, I want to see him. Where is he? Waiting outside. Uh, but I didn't tell him who was here or why I brought him with me. Supplies aboard. We better get started soon. Uh, we will, Hector. We will. I've never seen you before, young lady. I have. I never forget a face. Hector, I present Miss Webster. Webster? Susan Webster. Susan Webster? Mister, you promised to keep your hatch closed. Please wait. Please. Little Susan. You shot up an awful lot, Susan. Is it really, Uncle Morgan? Is it really? <laughs> I don't suppose there's any use in hiding it any longer, is there? Susan, I'd be careful about believing this man. Anyone could walk in here and say he's Morgan Richards. You're quite right, but what would you know about tree houses? Tree houses? Yeah. The same as I built for Susan and her brother. And it fell down twice before it was finished. Oh, Ralph, he's right. Johnny and I used to joke about it all the time. Well, of course I'm right. I had a devil of a job getting the wood up to the oak. Well, Elm. Elm was it? <laughs> That's right. It was the... I'm always up the wrong tree. Let's get cracking on the supplies. Uh, Miss Webster, if you'd like to come down to the tiki and look around, we'd be glad to have you. Well, that's a wonderful idea. Ralph? Uh, no, I... Have some things to clear up here. Oh, okay, let's go. Operator. I'd 
like to speak to Miss Kate Anthony, please. Oh, she's just lovely, Captain Troy. Yeah, she's a wonderful boat. Her uh, ship, uh, um, she floats beautifully and uh, makes knots, you know. We always see the port side. It's specially designed for the uh, port side. Excuse me. Find Kelly? Yeah, he's on his way. I've seen many ships sailing these waters, but the Dickies first class. They seem to be doing all right, huh? Yeah, so far. You don't look very much like I remember my Uncle Morgan. Well, 12 years is a long time, Susan. You talk like he might talk, though. Naturally. But I... I don't... I don't believe you are my uncle. Well, we'll just... let it go at that, hmm? You see, I never wanted to use the family name because I can't stand the family. Uh, that is, with the exception of you and Johnny, of course. Johnny. <laughs> that boy was so like me. He was more like a, a son than a nephew. I was very proud of that boy. Ah, oh, come on, Jelly. Let's have a little of the Richard's backbone, eh? The Richard's toughness and nastiness. You could be my uncle. Oh, you must be. You must be. Uh, uh, all right, my dear. Do you realize we haven't even seen the inside of the ship yet? I like it better than the outside. <laughs> Come on. No more trouble now, huh? Yeah, except for me. I'm not so sure I like all this anymore. Hey, let me know when Kelly comes aboard. Yeah. She lost the key of the cabinet. She gave some lovely cut glass. Tell me, sir, Miss Webster, we're gonna have to cut this little visit short. We've got a cargo to pick up and store. We're sailing in about an hour. In an hour? Must you go too? Uh, he's, uh, he's signed on. Well, couldn't you delay the sailing for a while? Oh, I'd like to, but uh, carrying cargo is the way I make my living. Sorry. Captain, could I, could I go with you? Well, I, I don't, uh... I think you a uh, sea board is just with this young lady niece. I'll pay my passage. You'll, um, uh, were you, to, you wouldn't want to miss your plane? It's only two days, right, to suit her, Captain? She'll be back in time to catch the plane. Now, Morgan. You don't want to separate us now, sir. Adam? Kelly's here, if you want to get started. Yeah, I do. Please, Captain Troy. Please, Captain Troy. Chris, take Miss Webster back to her hotel. Bring her bags. She's sailing with us. Thank you, Captain Joy. Thank you. <laughs> She's a nice kid. Uh, my niece. Back to Adventures in Paradise. Where's Hector? He's here just a few minutes ago. Well, that man can disappear fast. I on the way to Hong Kong. Oh, I thought you promised not to. Yeah, I know, I know. But I, I was nearly wetting my whistle. <laughs> I got soaked. <laughs> On credit, too. <laughs> All right. You've caused enough trouble already. Get back aboard and don't go near the locker in the main cabin. Yeah. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> 
I both touch down the drop. I know when I've had my limit. Good afternoon, Captain. Hello. I uh, hope you have room for all of us. When I told Ralph I was going, he thought it would be good if we all went. We're paying passengers, of course. Yeah, I, I guess so. Hey! Come aboard! We're going to weigh the anchor. He's right. Uh, <laughs> what he's trying to say is we're making ready for sail. Why don't you get on board? Run ahead and get to him. Get him below if you have to knock him out. I'd like to show you another little knot. It's called the, the masthead knot. You take the rope like this and turn it in. There you are. That goes over the mast. Now then, you take that and push it through like that. Pull it and... <laughs> they don't use that knot much these days anyhow. Come on, Cookie. Let's get dinner started. On the fire, Skipper. On the fire. Excuse me, Susan. in the old man's eyes? Well, he drinks. I'm Does sure of that. I've seen that look before. Yeah. Yeah. Blow the man down. Uh, uh. <laughs> There's nothing like it. Deck under your feet and the salt spray in your hair. And money in your pocket? Yeah. Eh? Big pardon, sir? Well, you know, Susan's mother left a will. Half her estate goes to her brother, if he's still alive. Hmm? I, I never give it a thought. Before that could happen, there'd uh, be an investigation, of course. An imposter could be in a great deal of trouble. Maybe even a prison sentence. You don't say. A smart man would uh, drop his masquerade now. Might even get himself some cold cash in doing so. Cash is never cold, sir. It's always hot from the little fingers that hold it. <laughs> thousand dollars would uh, buy an awful lot of whatever you want. Oh, it would, sir. It would indeed. Well? Yes, sir. An uncle's love is not for sale. <laughs> I've just been offered a small fortune to denounce myself. By who? <laughs> Harris. Thousand dollars. <laughs> I told him an uncle's love isn't for sale. Not at that price, anyway. You can actually feel the sea through it. If you have enough imagination. Your ship must be magic. A day ago, I, I felt so alone and desperate. Now I, my head is clear and I, I feel calm, like the sea. The sea can do that sometimes. It kind of gives you perspective. Hi. Hi. A little uh, cold for you here, isn't it, darling? It is a wee bit. Perhaps I better get a sweater. Here. We're uh, due there by morning, huh? That's the reckoning. My cook tells me you offered him a thousand dollars. Trying to save Susan what could be a great deal of embarrassment. She'll be going home in a few days. What if the old man decides to go with her? What if she asks him to? He wouldn't go. He locks his life here. 
Anyway, why are you so concerned? Because I think he's a fortune hunting fake. <sighs> Captain, I'm not saying that you had any knowledge of that when you brought him to her. But tell me honestly, do you really think your cook is Morgan Richards? These islands are full of lost men, Mr. Harris, living and dead. Identities are so changed around, you couldn't trace them. All I can believe is what he tells me. That's what we'll have to believe, Harris. That he is Morgan Richards. And when he gets back to the States and puts in his claim, half of everything will end up in his lap. But what if he's a fraud? Can you afford to take that chance? Well, I can't. I stood by for too many years watching that old lady spend money. Money that I could never touch. Just waiting for an opportunity like this. I won't let that old man ruin it for me now. There's another thing we can do to stop him. We know he's a drinker. If he falls overboard, it would be considered an accident. It would never be questioned. All you have to do is see that it happens. All these years I've lived, only the memory of you. Feeling that was part imagination and fancy. But now you're no, you're no longer fantasy, you're, you're real. And I'm not dreaming you. Yes, but sometimes uh, dreams are better than real. No, I... It, I think it's time to bunk down. Mm, all right. Are you going to turn in now? Uh, no, not exactly. I'll just walk around and think for a while. Well, good night. Good night. Sweet dreams. And sweeter awakenings. Blind now, it's too much light. Yeah, I'll give you too much light. Where'd you get the bottle? I had it. You had it. Come on, get out of there. All right, Skipper. I'm coming. You smell like a brewery in your local woods. If she comes along now. I I was standing there, minding my own business when I was attacked. You were what? I was attacked. Someone tried to throw me over the side. I got it. It was too dark to see it was, but I could feel it indistinctly. You're having a nice time. Now get to your cabin and clean up. But I tell you, I, I somebody tried to kill me. For what? Your life savings? Come on, get forward. 